What's up, fool? Welcome to the What's Up, Fool podcast with Rodrigo Torres. Yeah, man. And over there sporting her burgundy suit. I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not on camera. <laughs> Looking like Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, she's the track a, suit. <laughs> wearing a track suit. She used to be married to one of the Gambinos. <laughs> <laughs> she took over when the other woman got locked up. It was funny. I was seeing the little uh, story about the Gambinos. What happened? Well, the other side of Carlo Gambino, that's where the why Castellano got made, because that's his mom's side of the family. I didn't know that. Gambi- Carlo Gambino. The original one. He kept it all family, huh? Like, yeah, he, he came from Sicily. Like he he Only the, uh, the people that were like captains were all part of the family, huh? Yeah, that's why when Homeboy did what he did, John, John Gotti, he was from the street, like thug to the core. He took that power, dog. But so was Carlo Gambino. Yeah, he but he like he wasn't loud, dog. Never on any recordings, never on the phone, none of that stuff. Killing people with a blink of an eye, huh? Yeah, dude. He was ruthless, dude. Smoothly. He, was, he wasn't even tall. Little guy. Big old beak. Calling shots. Yeah, man. Making it happen. You know how he came up? How, fool? Um, Carlo Gambino came up, I think, during World War II or World War One, because he came, he, was, uh, he came from Sicily. Right. He was like... Um, and they were giving out, um, um, I think, um, during the Depression, they were giving out money, um, food vouchers, uh-huh. right? And that fool got a whole a bunch of food vouchers. And that fool was selling them, dude. That's like, a lot of food vouchers during the Depression. He, that's where he got a bulk of the money? He got a bulk of a lot of money out of that. He was making gang of money. Because he's the original, one of the, the original five families in New York, right? Yeah, so he saved up that money, you know, because he was like, a, he started small, bro. Like, he was... He came up with um, Lucky Luciano, right, 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 and the five, the original five families. But he was like a, like a smaller dude, like he was like an underling, underling. But he was there, bro. He was there in bro. the mix, in the mix. So that's how he came up. And later on, when he when um, that dried up, on um, the Bull State Act, bro, when they um, prohibition, they they mentioned that dude. Yeah, the prohibition. So that fool started making money, and um, he was, like um, they used to the way they made money was um. They would transfer, um, I guess, um, they were bootlegging and, like, like smuggling alcohol, man. Right. But they were, like, put in, like, in boxes with salt. Then the salt would come out, and then the bo- the boxes would just pop up, and they would look for them. So That's they, how they would smuggle that? Yeah. In trucks or what? No, they'll throw them in the ocean. They'll throw them in the ocean, for, to like, off a boat, because sometimes they would, like, take boats or they'll take trucks, too. Drag racing got started, bro, because of Prohibition. Right, well... Because those hillbillies, bro, they used to fucking take all that moonshine up north. Remember that uh, movie with uh, Richard Pryor, Grease Lightning? I never remember that. Pam movie. Greer was in it with him. But he was like, back in the day, he was uh, smuggling moonshine. That's when he became a race car driver. Fool. All in the little hick areas. <laughs> That's why I'm uh, in um, Dukes to Hazard, Uncle Jesse, you never saw him anywhere, bro. That fool was on house arrest for moonshining. Are you serious? Yeah, when you look up the Wikipedia. Yeah, the whole <laughs> the whole thing was them running because they were moonshiners, and that's why they weren't allowed to cross the state line and all that. Stuff. Really? You yeah. got Daisy Duke over here. <laughs> 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 and we don't like hick. We prefer the term hillbilly. Thank you very much. <laughs> she said we. <laughs> and nobody really says hicks. <laughs> or just Bill Hicks. Nobody says hicks. But, um, they say rednecks. I think redneck is the preferred. For but Boss Hall, he was yeah. a real boss man, like the original. Yeah. Like he, His character must, must have been based off some, some other... Movie like that. That's funny. I man. wish I knew the history on that. On what? On Boss Hog and like who that's. Oh, Boss Hog. He was <laughs> also <laughs> a bootlegger. I think yeah. I and think he used he, to work for Uncle he used, Jesse. He used to work with Uncle Jesse. He used to work yeah. with Jesse, but when, when Uncle but Jesse got locked, but he became a legit like a politician. Yeah, and, and, and Uncle Jesse got locked up, mm-hmm. and, and um, he didn't he didn't sing, bro. But they told him that he could be he's not gonna go to jail, but he can't start bootlegging again, and um, so um. I think the the Dukes the the his kids actually bootleg. Yeah, they're, they're, they're actually they're, running alcohol. And they're not supposed to leave the ca- they're not supposed to leave that area. Mm-hmm. That's why every time they leave their county, they get chased. Mm-hmm. And and again, like you know, becoming good drivers and being fast mm-hmm. and ditching the car. Yeah, <laughs> them Dukes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn, that's a tri- trip. Like you watch it as a kid, you don't even think of that. Dude, you know, when you watch it as a kid, like you don't know the Confederate flag was for the Confederate soldiers. Hell no, I thought it was for the their car. Thought it was for the General Lee. I used to wear. A, <laughs> I used to have a shirt with a General Lee. I had the car, dude. But I used to like to see those fools jump. Dog. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what I always liked. Yeah, man. <laughs> and if something it'll stop halfway, and they get out the guitar, I'll be like, now how them dudes gonna get up this peril? <laughs> <laughs> I full swore, dog. It's funny. I saw some uh, article on Tom Wopat, who played Luke Duke, 
and he, recently, and I guess he was accused of some sort of like inappropriate sexual behavior with somebody. Um, this was before all the celebrity things started coming out, and somebody had the had had that headline. Now, how are these Duke Duke boys gonna get out of this one? <laughs> Sam <Yeah>. Dukes. <laughs> Dukes. Damn, dude. I remember I used to watch Dukes of Hazard, dude, every Friday, dog. Like I had that was my routine. Eight o'clock, Wonder Woman. Oh, nine, yeah. o- nine o'clock, Dukes of Hazard. Damn. And then Wonder Woman got canceled. Then, then it was nine eight o'clock, Incredible Hulk. Then nine o'clock, Dukes of Hazard. And after that was either Dallas or Dynasty, but I was gone. <laughs> Dukes of Hazard was CBS, wasn't CBS, it? CBS, yeah. But then Wonder Woman, I thought that was ABC or I think Incredible Hulk, Incredible Hulk was not on CBS then. I think Incredible Hulk was NBC. But that was Swiss channels then. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Just never got up. <laughs> just that. I will, I will look up and then change the channel. Yeah, I Dallas. can't remember exactly, but, but yeah. Dukes of Hazzard come up and I, I, I forgot that I used to watch CBS because uh, that channel never came out good, bro. <laughs> growing up. We need an antenna. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, man. Those, those were my shows, man. Dukes of Hazzard. And then um, they changed, I guess, I don't even know. You know, when you're a kid, you don't understand what's going on, man. Like you're like you turn the TV on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are Bo and Luke's brothers? Why they're not here? Where the fuck? Why are their fucking cousins here? Remember they switched them, Lisa? Yeah, what I was didn't that like all about? their. <clears throat> I don't know. That might have been contract negotiations. Looking called? back or something, Strike. I can't remember their Coat. names. Yeah, that was like toward the end it of the Cold show. It was Colt and right? Bo. No, Bo and Luke. Aaron, you know what's up, bro. <laughs> You, you, How you, you one of them of dukes. <laughs> he goes, I don't even know who Enos is. <laughs> I loved Enos. He was my favorite. He Remember, was a nice one. <laughs> he, was a, he was like the nice cop. He yeah. was in love with Daisy. Yeah, he loved Daisy. And Daisy used to use her sexy body to trick him. <laughs> and her pantyhose under her, her shorts. <laughs> she had pantyhose on. I never noticed that. Thing. Wow, her legs are tanned. Yeah. <laughs> All the Three's Company women, when they wore shorts, they had pantyhose too. It always bothered me. I used to have a Dukes of Hazzard poster. <laughs> Bro, with... Um, with Bo and Luke and Daisy Duke right there. And I used to stare at Daisy Duke. Then I got older and I realized, like, man, these people have bulges. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They tied ass pants. I remember there used, were in a cup. <laughs> there used to be solo posters of Daisy. Yeah. Yeah, man. There used to be solo posters of all those chicks. Yeah. That's when I started liking white women. <laughs> <laughs> Subconsciously, bro. It was started out with Bionic Woman. Liz, I was influenced, bro. <laughs> Linda Wagner. Damn. Lindsay so Wagner, bro. Coy and Vance were, Wait. <laughs> were the other were the other cousins. And they were chased too. Yeah. But dude, there was a the Dukes has a were getting chased, but then there'll be like this black cop, bro. I think he was on two two seven. He was a sheriff of Chicken Salt County. He was yeah. mean. He was tough, bro. He was like uh He was not bad. He was he was all good. Like he would arrest Boss Hog. Yeah, he was like uh um, by the book. Jackie Gleason's sheriff in uh, Cannonball Run movie. Smoking the Bandit. I'm sorry, Smoking the Bandit. <laughs> Lisa got it correct. I'm though. sorry, Smoking the Bandit. You're right. One or two. I was talking about Cannonball Run with Isaac this morning. Hey, back in the <laughs> 80s, it was all about racing, huh? Buford. Hell yeah, it was all about being Buford. fast. Buford. Like Getting away from yeah. the cops. What else, dude, in the 80s? Then Captain America, right? Well, I was, uh, you know, like, you were like being in your hotel room. And then you're like, you, you just leave the TV on. And you start watching, you, you start changing, or you're about to take a nap. So you start watching whatever's on TV. Oh, hell yeah. Well, I was watching Standing Tall with the, with, with the fucking rock. Walking Tall. Walking Tall. In uh, Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, man. Horrible. They could have. They oh, you didn't like it? They, I hate they, Johnny they, Knoxville. They could have done it heart. without Johnny Knoxville. Or they could just put anybody there. <laughs> they could have put David Spade in that room. <laughs> I thought that movie was cool. He they disappeared for like an hour in the movie, didn't uh, he? Totally. <laughs> yeah, where'd he go? When he beat up all those people in the casino? He <laughs> fucked them up, bro. <laughs> that dude's a dick, huh? The drug dealer dude? Yeah. That dude was, was, a, that dude was born to be play dick roles, bro. A little evil guy, huh? A little, oh. The little blonde, white hair. Yeah, fool. dude. Yeah, he was Lex Luthor in, um, in um, the Superman show. Yeah, 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 dude. What show was that? Um, Smallville. Smallville. That's it. Yeah, I remember that for a while. By the way, um, um, Bo was in fucking um, Smallville. Mm-hmm. He played um, Clark Kent's dad. Yeah. Hey, so what happened in Walking Tall? You know? Fool, first of all, man. <laughs> it's, it, wow, man. Look, look, it's look at him. Look at just put, shoot that fool. <laughs> are we gonna Are we going to attack him one at a time? Can we all rush this fool? <laughs> That's the problem in movies, bro. That's what everybody gets their fucking ass kicked. Everybody rushes him one at a time. <laughs> Be real, bro. Rush him all at once. Like a Steven Seagal, man. 
Fuck. You ever seen the first first movie? It was badass. <laughs> Above the law. Above the law, dog. That's that's right. The uh, the cousins Vance and Coy on Dukes of Hazard replaced them during contract negotiations. Oh damn! But they were so unliked, so unpopular with fans. They were written out after 19 episodes. That's a lot of episodes. That's a oh, lot. Yeah. That's, half that's a season. That's a whole season. That's half, <laughs> almost. Let me tell you about yeah. that, man. In 2017, those the original Boy and Lou's were never came back. They just fucking canceled the show. <laughs> yeah. Like like he they basically pulled a Charlie Sheen without talking shit. What they called again? Their names? Vance? Coy? Vance and Coy. Fuck Vance and Coy. <laughs> <laughs> and not only is that, I think they brought in their sister too. So oh, that sounds familiar. I didn't like that. But su- uh, su- uh, supposedly they lived on the farm before Bo and Luke came in and then they left. And then they came oh back. That was the backstory. <laughs> and they tried the to make farm, them like man. bad boys, worse. Like uh, somebody said they were. They were younger and more better looking. Yeah, they were blonde and, and brunette and nobodies. They were nobodies. <laughs> Where are they at now, bro? <laughs> Hating on us. <laughs> Imagine they were listening. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> they were. They're always like, only, only in like in soap operas, what they introduce like the, that someone's gone. Like mm-hmm. in the role of Lisa Esparza, it will be taken over by Antoinette. Oh yeah, Scudder. I hated hearing that because sometimes your favorite actress, like sometimes. Uh, no, Beth Miller. <laughs> like sometimes your favorite character would who was a regular was sick or something during during filming or taping so they would put somebody in and they would announce it and I'd get so mad I hated that and Kendall like Kendall okay Kendall on All My Children she was played by <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, this part is brought to you by Ty <laughs> and All My Children over here dog. I watched All My Children for 30 years uh, I did as a kid. I do watch the Latino up. one. All my mijos. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I, mean, I don't think I've ever watched a soap opera before. Yeah, my mom watched it, so I watched it. But um, what's her face? Erica Kane's daughter was named Kendall, right? And she was played by, look. and originally played by um, the girl who married Freddie Prince Jr. Um, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Killer. Yeah, and she was. I really to love that. It was chick. before she played oh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Love you, badass. <laughs> It was before Buffy the Vampire Slayer and before she got famous. So this was her first thing when she was a teenager. I hated her so much. And I used to see her in Soho smoking. Oh, she's a cutie, huh? Oh. Sh- um, Buffy? Uh, yeah. uh, Some girls don't like that little that little head, huh? Why not be uh, <laughs> someone who's going to call Felipe when you're going to talk, dog? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I will back out now. Oh, no, sorry, my it's, God. It's all good. But yeah, man. We're back, though. I, Duke's I, it all depends. You know who you hang out with? They're going to start watching the, the the American soap operas. Because, man, once you get into it, you're into it. And, and and it ain't like um, the the Spanish soap operas. These don't end. These yeah. continue. Yeah, that's the thing. That's I didn't understand that about novelas, that they end. After a while. After a while. And then you just those characters are dead or gone. You I, I don't know? understand why they do that. Like, could, could we continue this saga for another 20 years? I know. You could. You could, because uh, they just keep rebranding it. Like Betty La Fea, that yeah. other soap opera that has Luke and Laura. I didn't even know who Luke. General Hospital, they got married. Yeah. Hospital, yeah. But didn't they, got they go in the from 80s. like young to who old? Who all his hair? They kept coming <laughs> back. Yeah, they were always welcome. <laughs> so he did. He went off and did UHF. He played bad like, guys, dude. Yeah. But I used to watch when I was living um, with my baby mama. We used to watch <laughs> Loving <laughs> at eleven o'clock. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a half hour. It was eleven thirty to twelve. Eleven thirty to twelve. Hour. Yeah, and then, the and then another world. Up. Well, the news or came Days of Our Lives. Turn the channel then. Days of Our <laughs> Lives. I used to watch Loving, Days of Our Lives, and Another World, I think. No, oh, not Another World. I forgot which one it was, but there was a mean guy. His name was Stefano. That's General they, Hospital. General oh, Hospital. Oh, Days of Our Lives. Days of Our Lives. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Who's the Thank one on you, General Hospital? Hey, Remember Patches? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I, to, I was all into it, man. <laughs> they couldn't oh find God, Patch dog. has disappeared in a storm, bro. Patch. And Patch. <laughs> he just, I, I thought, I want, dude, I got like, dude, I want to be that fool, dog. <laughs> I thought he was so cool. But then he had a nemesis, dude, that kind of didn't like him. And it was Donovan. <laughs> and, and he ended up being like the main guy in the nanny. <laughs> the British was, guy? The British guy, really? Donovan. And then later on, bro, like, so purpose in the like the English one gets so into it that they they they, they somebody in the episode always had an evil twin brother somewhere. <laughs> somebody like right now, there's a nice Felipe Esparza somewhere out who doesn't drink, who doesn't do anything, man. You know, he's not married, lives by himself, like a nerd. But is now, he black? He's black. <laughs> he's a jazz player, but he wears a cab. This is Bizarro Felipe. Yeah, but yeah, like because because uh, later on, I think Donovan had an evil brother that showed up out of nowhere. Kid Donovan. Who's nice? Yeah. No, oh, no, mean. he was the evil he was one. a jerk. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. I so never we, watched that show. So we thought Patch died, right? Then later on, it, it, like, it was like the season finale. That fool shows up all, fuck, all tore up at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> the Patch was in the other eye. He had a whole new life, bro. Really? Yeah, man. So I watched that for a long time. Like, Lisa, man. Lisa knows her soap opera fools. We were watching movies. We could watch a porn. She'd be like, hey, I think I'm in general hospital. <laughs> I only watch. Dirty debutantes. I only watch <laughs> like, uh, the ABC like, ones. Like the girl that married to, um, she's married to um, the Black Eyed Peas. What's that chick name? Oh, yeah, Fergie. Uh, she's married to a, her soap opera Josh star. Duhamel. Oh, really? Josh Duhamel. He was on her Vegas. Her man crush. He was on Vegas, too. The TV show Vegas with James Caan. He was on that show. He was my man crush for a little while, but then he got his teeth Fuck fixed. Fuck that guy. <laughs> you wanted the old teeth. But then he got his I liked his old teeth. They were they had character. But he got his teeth fixed. I got all my teeth fixed for nothing. <laughs> Somebody punched so, me. Soap operas, I never watched one, dude. Bro, they're all waffles, bro. They're all good looking, bro. I mean, Emilio Emilio Rivera, we, who we yeah, had he was, uh, that's Santa right. Barbara. Santa Barbara. <laughs> really? I just thought that's what like women like ladies that had kids would watch when they would go to school and the husbands would go to work. They're dramatic. Yeah, but the kids end up watching them. That's how I ended up watching it. Really? I, I started watching it at yeah. five or six years old. I was you watching do, it. You get into it. Yeah. I remember that little hourglass. These are the days of our yeah. life. That that's, <laughs> that's the only thing I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I was like, what the fuck? I'm going to ride my bike. And now, these are the days of your lives. <laughs> yeah, dog. I didn't know they were all so, like, they're all invigorating. They're all beautiful, bro. <laughs> There isn't an ugly fool. Even if you're like the, even if you're the rapist of the of the soap <laughs> opera, you're like, you know what? I can see how she could have led him. <laughs> a handsome rapist. They're all handsome, bro. Hey, um, didn't Denzel Washington come out of a soap operas and jo- George Clooney? Um, George Clooney, I don't know, but George Clooney was on a show called about um, Saint Elsewhere, or so. Denzel. Yeah. Denzel was in Saint Elsewhere. Okay, and that's a soap that's opera. A medical drama. Medical drama, like like, like it was like a um, <laughs> medical drama. Yeah. Kind of like that show, um, I don't know, some show on um, Felic- Felicity? Felicity? Drama? I don't know. Yeah, but that was, that was like a Grey's Anatomy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think he died in that, in that show. Oh, damn. He became a ghost. <laughs> An image. That was, that's, that's, always, that's always like, um, you know... Um, that always sucks how when you're when you're like on a show you, you watch the show and your favorite character dies oh, and you want that fool to come back but then he come back like a whack ass ghost. <laughs> well, even watch it again, dude. Yeah, man. So you never watch like soap opera with your mom novelas? No. Well, dude, I would see it. Or, Bro, I those mujeres un camino. I just see the intro. I was like, oh my god. Dude, they paid Eric Estrada so nasty money, much money to play um, those mujeres un camino. That was a mean old show. He, he had sex with both of them, bro. That ended up being dos mujeres un pepino. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's the ultimate um, scandalous thing for someone to do with, with someone who get, gets caught cheating. They put you in a meme like that. With the chick you're messing around with and the chick you're with, dos mujeres un pepino. <laughs> well, the soap opera that Eric Estrada was in was called um, Two Women, One Road. But we call it two women, one penis. Yeah, that was the uh, 90s, huh? They paid him so much money, and you know he couldn't speak Spanish? Puerto Rican guy couldn't speak Spanish? That they had to, um, he had to learn his lines in Spanish, but he never actually learned how to speak Spanish. Like all his Spanish is, tu sabes? Real quick. It's not like he's faking it. I bet you he is. He's from this, where's he from, Cali or East he's Coast? He's from the East Coast. Who has our guess? <laughs> That's funny when you meet one nationality, you start thinking about other nationalities. Like, hey, bro, you're Vietnamese. Do you know that guy from the last time I was standing? <laughs> Duck something. That fan. That fan. I was going to say tan fan. Tan but fan. That, that What's fan. up, people? This weekend, this Friday, tonight, we're in Salinas, California. We're at the Fox Theater. The show is sold out. What? Oh, yeah? Dude. There's like 45 tickets left, but if you're trying to get two tickets together, they're not together. Okay. They're not together at all. They're separated. Like, you got to sit in the front and I sit in the back. <laughs> and this Saturday, Bakersfield at Fox Theater, there's some tickets left. There's some tickets left. I'm not sure how many. December 14th through the 17th, Addison Improv in Addison, Texas, Saturday night, sold out show. 
I think almost, just almost about. Almost sold out, bro. Never happened, huh, bro? Crazy, dog. It been sold out when we were there, right? Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll get sold out. I think but like I mean, one or two ahead. shows have sold out, but never before you got in there. Never. Not never. Right. Thank you, HBO people who watched it. Also, in January, I'm coming to Boulder, Colorado, Portland, Oregon, Chicago, Illinois, New York, New York, Palm Springs, Coachella, California, Tucson, Arizona. Check out FelipeWorld.com tour for all shows. And dates and ticket links. Shout outs to these fools, Rodrigo. Maloso underscore Zacatecano. Thank you very much, Big Dog. Who wishes the podcast could be longer? Gunt Thriku, listening from the Czech Republic, even though he's Mexican. Shout out to Czech Republic. Check, check, better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Right? Give us some joy and cocoa, bro. They miss it. Can't be messing around over there. They'll put you in that Russian Greco move, squeeze some fucking hummus out your ass, and you're done. I, mean, <laughs> I got into a new show on Amazon, bro. Really? For yes. what? The Americans? No, I'm still watching that shit, bro. Okay. This is it, badass. It gets better, huh? You been watching it? Dude, I got the first episode. That shit was long. Oh, they're, it's all introdu- okay, okay, they're introducing okay. everybody. I'm going to watch the next one tonight. Oh, man, you got to watch it. What's the new show you're talking about? Oh, man. I, I, I like watching shows, man, of places that I, I just want to see. You know, like you watch a travel show and you see everything that's real. Oh, fool. Before we get to that, Go for Anthony it. Bourdain, bro, he, he has a little evangelist show, right? Uh-huh. When he, he, he filmed his show in Los Angeles, he went to Boyle Heights. And he interviewed um, Al Madrigal, right? right? And they were eating somewhere. And then Lots he interviewed um, Danny the Trejo. Okay. And he interviewed <laughs> um, Mr. Cartoon and Esteban Oriol. Okay, probably right, right? downtown. And he interviewed some people from, from Boyle Heights. That they go on his jog. But he interviewed some guy that he only spoke to for like maybe 10 minutes. That he sh- the, sh- the whole show should have been around this guy. This guy was one of the cops from the Rampart Division. Shut Straight up. Straight up Chicano, bro. He spoke for a little bit, bro. And he... He he threw cheese in the in the in the conversation, bro. We gotta get that guy on a podcast. I gotta find out who his name, and we're gonna have him on the show. But anyways, this fool started talking about um, which I never really knew. He said that the whole that Denzel Washington movie Training Day. He goes, it's all based on a cop from Rampart. Really, a brother too? He goes, I don't know. He didn't say, he didn't mention name, but it was all based on on a real situation that happened in Rampart Division. He goes, I was caught up into in all that shit, dude. And he, he just started talking. That's awesome, dude. Luke. What's up, foo? Have What's a seat, up? sir. So a new show I got into with man on Amazon is called um. Well, so I watch travel shows, right? So this show is based in 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 um Greenland, in Iceland. It's it's a cop show. So you know how you watch something, then they tell you, if you like this, you might like that. So they told me if you like Fargo, you're gonna like this show. And I realized why they they chose that show because they based. Not because on the content, because Fargo is cold as hell, right? So they saw snow. Oh, Greenland. So they show it in Iceland. So they show it basically they found a dead body, and there's a big ship coming in, so everybody in that ship can't get out the ship. So the whole episode is about, the whole series is about the murder and somebody. It's like murder in the Orient Express, but in the ship, and it's all Iceland, and it's snowy, bro, like all white snow. Well, they're investigating and all yeah, that Yeah, man. What's it called? It's called Trapped. Trapped, okay. You know me, man. I find weird shows, and I want to get into them. Like, I like to watch shows that nobody's watching because I think they're funny, man. <laughs> yeah, well, I need some new shows. You know. Like That's our why. guest, bro. <laughs> that fool a detective in France. Oh, hell yeah. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Me la, me la <laughs> Oh, that's Italian. <laughs> Next door. What's up, fool? You excited, dog? About oh, guess? please, bro! I've been excited since the last week at uh, me too, Ontario bro. when we seen I, I, him. I've been wearing the same sweater since so he gave me a hug. <laughs> on it. I've been taking it off. I got the same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna say, look good in it. Thank you, bro. <laughs> oh man, is there, there are so fires cool. by your house? No. Well, there was a fire at the r- river bottom last week, supposedly set by homeless people. That's out. But no, there's no fire. Just mad winds. There's fire at my house, bro. Fucking Thousand Oaks, they na- they named it to, they're going to rename the city to a couple of oaks. <laughs> no shit, real soon. <laughs> this shit keeps up. It was a fire, bro. A I'm fire, bro. There's people out there already, get, already getting, um, there's people that t- are telling me to already claim um, false claims for fires, even though there's not a fire in my house. He- Some guy told me, because <laughs> I woke up in the morning, and he said, I looked in the bottom of the pool, it was all black full of ashes. Then my Lyft driver, some Armenian, not to <laughs> say that he said, my friend, you could file a claim. You have ashes on your swimming pool. Maybe get 
$7,000 for a cleaning. <laughs> it's not going to cost $7,000. Our guy would do it for like 200 bucks. Yeah, but you know Armenians know other Armenians. We know. know Armenians. <laughs> My friend. What's up, fool? We have a guest today. Man, I don't. This fool, we are so lucky to have him. We haven't have a, 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 a guy with this many movie credits, and we had who? Emilio. Emilio, Emilio. Rivera from Southern Monarchy. <laughs> Emilio Rivera. Rivera. Ah, okay. My neighbor, old neighbor. That fool can make the rain stop. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to the mailman for you. Right here we have, come on, Rodrigo. Give us, introduce him, bro, with, with some. Sh no pressure, puppy. With no a pressure. New York <laughs> accent, bro. Tony Soprano. Well, this guy right here, a lot of you guys may know, uh, yeah. it takes a lot of money on the breeding. <laughs> a true treasure, a gem. I hear the East Coast working like all the Latinos do. You sound like you have sleep apnea, but go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. I got my mask on. I don't got the mask. Pero sabe que? Que que? Lo que está pasando aquí es un honor de tener este tipo aquí. Una estrella. Tremendo. Enorme. Por favor, señores y señoras, ladies and gentlemen, please Desde welcome. Nueva York. From New York City. Low East Side, L.E.S. Over 300 movies. Please. Put your hands together for Mr. Boogie Lu Nights. Luis Guzman. What's up, fool? What's up? Papa. Que pasa, mi gente? First of all, man, thank you for being on the show. Bro, oh, yeah, bro. bro, it's an honor, yeah. bro. Let you me... wearing a badass shirt, Basquiat, right here? That's oh, it. Yeah. That's it. Bro, let me tell you something. John Basquiat. You're fucking badass. Am I allowed to say that? Yes. Am I allowed to say you that? Can say it over and okay, over. Okay, double time. <laughs> You're fucking double badass. <laughs> Thank you, man. You know, I saw I caught your show on Saturday, bro, and it was like, well, I saw I seen your your HBO special, first of all, okay. But seeing you live, I said, shit, man, this brother knock on my door at three or four <coughs> in the morning, he's coming in, <laughs> he's coming in. <laughs> We're staying up, y'all. We ain't, he ain't gonna stop talking here. Let's go, Dolly. Dolly, me, bro. It's your badass, and it's an honor for me to be sitting next to you. Oh man, the honor is mutual, right, Rodrigo? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And that was a great introduction, bro. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Only for you, bro. But you go the king of the, the king of introductions. <laughs> He's the king of the roaches. Right. What's up, bro? Gigo? With these fires, you think the roaches, everybody, everybody's scattering? Dude, the roaches <laughs> are, are gone. Su uh, survive a nuclear blast. That's the only thing that'll survive. No, no, they won't survive the fires, though. <laughs> I don't know, man. There was a house that burned down, okay? This was over there in Southgate. It burned down. We used to do the roaches, right? It was a little apartment building. We came back. They rebuilt the place. It still had roaches. <laughs> If a f okay, Over there I've by Tweety. I've always wanted I'm not this, even so messing with if you. If they can survive a nuclear blast, then why are, do you exist? <laughs> then what can an exterminator do for it? How no, I, I think it's the way that the chemicals attack the money. exoskeleton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because if there wasn't you anybody... because it's like a slow, ongoing process? What like, do you mean? Like you go the back, you keep going back and all that. Man, this, this is a thing, man. In the end... We're talking scam. about roaches or Luis Guzman? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is interesting. This you is got, interesting. You, ladies and gentlemen, you have to keep your house clean. Of no, course. no. I got, I, That's I, it. I got a theory, though. Go for I it. I got a theory. So, so you're roaches. We, here, here we go. <laughs> New York. Uh, we're not talking roaches, though. We're going to talk human beings, right? <laughs> okay. So back in the day, we get a cold for what? Two or three days? Yes. Right. Nowadays, that cold hangs down for what? Two, three weeks. Right, right. A month. Okay? A month. So it's like our immune system... It's shot. You know, anytime they give you penicillin on stuff like that, that's not working no more. The only thing that works is mezcal, tequila, <laughs> and good weed. That's it. <laughs> you know that's what? That's it. He ain't lying, man. I smoke weed every day, bro. I haven't had asthma in my life. <laughs> that's I haven't had cold, <laughs> flu, bro. Yo, you walk around I'm out here, ass. you go hiking, you develop asthma. <laughs> Stay indoors. This is a smuggler. For real, man. Rodrigo got cancer doing push-ups. <laughs> no shit? No, nah, just joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> this fool. <coughs> oh, oh, yeah, that, man. that was a fake cough, man, but I was convinced. <laughs> Tell you, man, this guy's an actor, bro. He knows what's easy. Oh, uh, please. <laughs> so you're from Lower East Side? Lower East Side, wow. New York City. And actually, this guy here, yeah. he used to hustle off us yeah. back in the day. I knew his girlfriend. I worked. At, I used to live in New York, and I worked with Jean Bosque. I worked with his girlfriend, well, former girlfriend, Suzanne Malouf. Okay, who's a doctor and now? She, she's yeah, she's a doctor now, but she was a manager of a restaurant back then. But she's a pediatrician, pe or no, pediatric psychologist actually. Now. Oh, look at that! But she was out on the streets with him and everything for years, and she's who is portrayed in the movie. I think is it Annabella Estiora who yeah. plays her? No, not Annabella Estiora. It's another woman named. Oh, I can't remember. But yeah. the woman who she portrays her, but yeah. 
Yeah, he was yeah. amazing. Yeah. So you grew up in Lower East Side. I, I was watching this um this old movie. Oh man, I was I was falling asleep at a hotel room, and this movie was from like the nineteen seventies or nineteen sixties, and man. There was a shitload of fucking gangs in New York back then. Oh, yeah, they man. Used to wear, they used to call them the jacket gang. They used to wear jackets. Like, they'll say, like, vultures or something <laughs> or whatever. Kind of like the warriors. Remember the warriors? Old school. Old yeah. school. But there was, like, you can even walk uh, in a different part. Of the, kind of like what LA is now, where you can't walk on a different street. If you're, if, you're like a, if you're Latino with a bald head, somebody could hate you up and say, where you from, fool? Was it that bad in New York? Uh, it was that bad. Did you wear a jacket too? Yeah. What was your jacket? What, 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 what was your group? Uh, my, I, I was part of LES Satan's. Damn. Oh, yeah. and your um, your jacket had a Satan in the back with a pitchfork dancing. No. Oh, cause I, cause, <laughs> cause I, 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 I was watching a movie right, and That's they were like, they were getting all these. They were, it was a documentary. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he made it up. I was, they yeah. Were, they were getting all these kids right, and they were like, this, it goes. Well, it, it was funny because there was a white man talking, right? They were like, the movies are black and white. Well, we're trying to get these juvenile kids, you know, to get out the streets, you know, maybe we give them something productive, you know what I mean? So we're going to get these kids to um, paint houses, you know. And they show these kids painting houses, big ass dude with an afro. <laughs> He's still wearing his gang jacket. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you wore colors. We used to call them colors. The, 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 we didn't call them jackets. We called them colors. We wore our colors. And so, like, in my neighborhood, we had the Dynamite Brothers, we had Saints Blood, the Royal Javelins, the Sportsmen's, you know. Um, it was something back in the days to belong to a gang, you know. But I used to always tell them, "Dude, you don't even own the fucking block. What are you? <laughs> what are you? What are you protecting?" But it was there. But there were real rumbles. Oh hell yeah, bro! Hell yeah, man! I mean, you know, I mean they, they, they used to be like a whole strategy before the rumble, and then we, and then we were sending the peacemaker to meet with the other gang's peacemaker to say, okay, we want to squash this or what? So if we send in the peacemaker and he came back all fucked up, there was no peace. Damn, that shit was an all-out See, war, huh? When I was a kid, I saw a movie like that with, um, it was, um, I forgot that guy's name, but he was in a movie called Wise Guy on CBS. He was an actor on Wise Guy. Ken Wall? Ken Wall. He was in a movie called The, the Wanderers. And the Wanderers. Wanderers. And there was like a shitload of gangs in that movie. And I said, God damn. And I was watching those movies. I was like, fuck, man. New York would be crazy, man. I'm never going to go over there. I'm going to get mugged. And I remember Don't the first time mugged. in the Bronx, I kept watching my back, you know? Because uh, I kept thinking about the duckies, bro. Bro, let me tell you something. Back in the day when you went to the Bronx, and this shit used to happen, I, I hated going to the Bronx, bro. Especially driving to the Bronx because we go, we go to somebody's family. We come back, let's go. It's 2, 3 in the morning, turn on the fucking car. The car don't turn on. Motherfuckers, you steal your like, batteries, man. Mm. And then some guy, what happened, Papa? Somebody stole your battery, man? Yo, I got one right here. And it's yours. And it's my fucking battery, that man. Happened happened that you, happened to mama. you? That happened to me in Ohio. First day of school, they stole my dad's battery. No and shit. then he went down the street to buy a new battery from like that salvage lot, and they had our battery. <laughs> Did but people would chain their hoods closed. So people people don't know about them. the hood, man. We used to put a lock on our batteries. Yeah, no shit, right? Remember that? Put a lock on it. <laughs> yeah. Before a a car chain. alarms, your car had a lock in the front. Yeah. Man, if your car overheated, man, it'd be hard to open that lock, man. It's hot. <laughs> Can't even find the lock. No shit, bro. My, my father's battery was taken one time, and that fool knew who took it, and he knocked in the house, and he walked in there, and those fools were smoking crack, and they just picked up his Sears battery <laughs> and walked out. That's what they do, dog. Pinchy <laughs> Tony. That's it. We don't have to worry about that shit no more. Or like, um, no lie, man, when uh, I remember listening to Tracy Morgan, and he, he was talking about when he got his real famous, and he was trying to move, he said that we moved that, he moved out at his house at 2 in the morning. And I'm like, what the fuck? Who the house, who moves out at 2 in the morning? People in New York, huh? People in the hood. Yeah, people, he, yeah, people in the hood that don't want anybody to know where they're going. <laughs> I did that. Yeah, he said they would have followed him. They I did that. Yeah. I did that, man. I came into some money. I'm not going to tell you how, but I came into some money, <laughs> and all my boys wanted me to take my father's car and drive to Las Vegas, and I said, let me think about it, guys. Let me think about it. I think I, we'll, we'll, we'll get together tomorrow. Bro, I got up at 4 in the morning, went down to the bus terminal, got on the bus, Slipped out of town for like a month. 
Nobody knew where I was. <laughs> Good for you. Me and too. I, and I kept all the money. <laughs> Man, you go. Th- th- you ever go back to the neighborhood and you see the your, the people doing the same thing? Bro, bro, let me tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you about that. So you know when 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 it got to the point that like people like began to notice who I was and I was making it. You know, one day I was walking down Pitt Street. And this brother called, yo, Louis, yo, what's up, Papa? And I'm looking, and it's like, oh, shit, this guy. And he's, like, calling me, and he co- and he comes over and says, Papa, how you doing? And then he goes, yo, man, you got 10 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him, and I said, let me tell you, bro, I got 10 bucks. You ain't fucking getting it. Because I remember back in the day when we used to, like, choose, like, who's going to be on whose basketball team. You never fucking chose me and your basketball <laughs> team. So I'm going to keep my $10, and Papa, I'm out of here. Fuck well, that. When, when he went last comic standing, somebody hit him up to see if they he would pay their rent. Get out. Because they they backed oh. him up one time in a fight years ago. Yeah. Back in oh, the no shit. So it's like pay up. Yeah, yeah he wanted 10 Gs. <laughs> God damn. Where's Get he the living? fuck out of here, man. Uh, he wanted 100 for every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, cause yeah, that, that guy he didn't even have, he didn't even hold no gun. <laughs> I was holding it. All he did was back up, like just, he was just standing behind me. <laughs> like if, if something went down, he would have done something. But I ended up doing the, everything, bro. But but no, I, I be honest with you though. It's like you know, I, I go down to the neighborhood and I still see a lot of my friends and stuff like that. And you know, I'm cool with everybody. Everybody's cool with me and stuff like that. But. I had to explain to some of my brothers down there. I said, "Yo, man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the money tree and shit, you know." And uh, so I always take everybody out to eat, you know, something like that. I don't know if that only happens like in the Latino and Black community where, oh man, don't you forget where you came from. Like I always feel like, I wonder if, if Jewish people are telling Steinfeld, man, don't you forget where you came from. <laughs> don't you forget about your rabbi here in here in Brooklyn. <laughs> I never heard that, but this is new to me. Oh, but, but you la- have massive peak with Jerry. But Lati- yeah. Latinos, I, th- I think, I think ethnic break bread, homie. Yeah, I think people who make it, who who are ethnic, I think these, they're people, the fans who are that same ethnicity, feel like, hey, you belong to us in some way. You know, you you made it. It's like one of us making it, but they feel a connection, like. You know, you got to give back. You got that's why George Lopez is called a sellout. That's why they so they call everybody a sellout who, who makes it to a certain point know, and doesn't man. talk to certain people anymore. I heard, sellout. I heard I seen people say bathtub about Paul Rodriguez, and I'm like, dude, you, you didn't even know how much money he's donated over his life. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, how much good he's remember done he for bust goodwill. Those pe- remember, he bust those people to the laugh factory, it was like a bunch of people from Ventura area, yeah, and they from the fire. and then that woman was like talking to him, and he felt bad for her, and he like stuffed a bunch of money in her pocket. like. He's he's constantly helping people. Well, you There's know what? I, I I be honest with you. I mean, that's the most important <laughs> thing, man. The most important gift that we have, whether we're actors, comedians, and stuff like that, is our is, is us being humble. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's like I never forget where I come from, and if I can help, I will help. I don't need to be asked to help mm-hmm. because you know I know what it is to ask for help myself because I've been there. I've been in those places, you know, and so you know you never forget, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 uh, people that do forget, man, you know that that this thing called karma, what goes around comes around. Mm-hmm. But you know, I don't have to deal with that, and you don't have to deal with that because, you know, we're grounded, we're good people, we're fucking crazy. But you know, we know we know our roots. So, I work with um, comedians from New York um, that that know you, or well, they know you. Like I know I work with um, some, what's that guy named Vega? What's the name of the guy? Vega? I don't know Vega. Oh, 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 uh, Tony? So, yeah. No, he's a comedian. Two comedians from New York. One of them used oh, to uh, write on John, on the busting and that show um, House of Bugging. House of Bugging? Yeah. Okay, who, John Leguizamo? Yeah, one of the writers. He, I worked with him on the, on, in El Paso, but I forgot, I forgot his name right now. I don't know his name. John, Vega, he wrote for, he, Vega, he, 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 he wrote for uh, Chris Rock. He was, uh, he was showcasing. Does, does, does he open for Mark Anthony? Yeah, he's a comedian. The, 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 so yeah. he does he does stand up during yeah. the Mark Anthony show. Yeah. Oh, you mean Mark Vieira? No, not no? Vieira. I know he's Mark. An older comedian. He was oh, he was oh, he was um writing for Chris Rock when Chris Rock was here. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know who you Johnny about. Vega, right? I don't know. Wait, the Johnny? I'm gonna, I got <coughs> now I gotta look it up, man. Oh, this is killing me. This is killing me. Come on, Louis. Even now we're this. Latino Laugh Festival together. Okay, no, keep talking. Keep talking. And then we're on Johnny the air. Vega. Then the guy from the El Paso show. 
another Latino comedian. These three comedians are all good friends. The guy from Scarface, bro. What's his name? Uh, Richard Belzer? No. Oh, what's, what guy? Latino comedians. Oh, Latino comedians. Oh, oh, oh you you're talking about Angel, Angel Salazar. Salazar. Angel yeah, Salazar. Angel Salazar and these two other comedians, they're, two, they're all good buddies. Yeah, Angel, Angel, Angel. They used to start you. Angel they, told me the best joke ever, bro. What? Joey Vega. Joey Vega. Joey, 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 Joey. And there's another friend of his. I Look fucking him up. love Joey. Yeah. Joey, Joey's like real old school and shit, you know? But, bro, so... So one time we, we were shooting Calito's way, and so all the Latinos were hanging out and everybody telling jokes. So this one brother, he steps up and he goes, yo, you know what, man? I know Puerto Rican judo. You ever hear that joke? You never heard that joke? I heard Mexican judo. You don't know if you got a knife. Oh, see, you just fucking killed it for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't hear Moving what he said. on. I didn't hear what he said. I know Mexican judo. <laughs> what did he say? You don't know I got a knife. Oh, you don't, you don't know, know if I got a gun. You don't know if I got a knife. <laughs> Angel Salazar are funny, bro. Hilarious. Talk. One time we were we were all we were in I was doing Latino I was come with Mike Robles. It was Yeah, I remember was, that. Was que locos. And I was hosting a show. And we we're all eating Chinese food, right? I wasn't I wasn't even smoking no pot. I wasn't even drinking. It was Joey Coco Diaz, right. Angel Salazar, and some other comedians. And then Angel Salazar looks up and goes, Papi, I, I don't know what I'm doing hanging around with you comedians. I should be inside a comedy club writing jokes right now. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna let we, I'm gonna see him. I'm gonna straighten his shit out. <laughs> Yo, but you know, you know, like the funniest shit I ever seen in my life. Have you ever you ever seen John Leguizamo's uh, one man shows? I seen the one where he did a like dressed. He does a character with like a woman. Oh, Manny the Fanny. Yeah, bro, Manny the Fanny is by <laughs> far. But I I saw that show. Live? I saw I saw it live, and it it was the last show. And so, you know, he, he said, come see my show. And so Manny the Fanny comes down in the second act. So I'm watching this, and, and like, I'm back, you know, a bit. And I said, oh, man, who is that babe on the stage, man? Oh, <laughs> shit. She must be warming it up for John the second half. And all of a sudden I look, I look at that. That's fucking John. <laughs> oh, man, he did that shit so convincing. Come on, bro. Cause I remember Homeboy from Mambo Mouth, that first little half hour HBO special. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that was the first time I saw him. That's when he did Manny the Fanny. Okay. It was doing Mambo Mouth, man. Funny, huh? Guys, oh, guys, a... just looking at you guys right now. I don't know how you guys were looking drag, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can show you, bro. I did a Target commercial. You did a couple things. Also I, did a target, I did a Target commercial when I get there. I'm like, wait, nobody told me I dress up like a chick, <laughs> right? But then they said, but you're going to play the mom and the dad and the little girl and the little boy. Okay, so I'm playing the whole family. Okay, not just the mom? All right. So, man, I look horrible, bro. <laughs> you kept your beard. I kept my beard, eh? <laughs> I look like the bearded lady. Yeah, you look like the bearded lady. <laughs> What's up after Madden? <laughs> so how did you get started in acting? Like, what made you be, want to be an actor? Or well, I what was, led you there? I was, I, was, I, was a, I was a social worker on the Lower East Side. And uh, I never... Where's my welfare check? <laughs> No, I didn't do well for okay. my 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 goal in my life working with I used to work with young people between 17 and 21 was to get them off the welfare row and become independent human beings. But anyway, what happened was one day two young people didn't show up and I was walking down the avenue looking for them. I ran into a friend of mine, Miguel Pinero. He wrote this great thing called Short Eyes. They made it into a movie. It was an award-winning play in New York. And he said, yo, I'm ready for the TV show. They're going to come into New York. They're going to be looking for people and stuff like that. I went, I auditioned. Three weeks later, I'm, co I'm co-starring on the season premiere of Miami Vice. That was like my first gig. I show up the first day. You a cop? No, man, I was a fucking drug dealer, bro. <laughs> Remember Latinos back in the yeah. 80s? Drug dealers? Yeah, we need another Latino drug dealer. So I, was, I, was, I, was playing a, I was playing a freaking Colombian big time drug dealer and shit like that. And brother, all I wanted to get out of that. What was your character name? Oh shit, that's a good one. Calderon is back. <laughs> I don't know what Caldron. his name. I don't know. I'll find it. Maybe it was Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So anyway, that was, that, was, that, was, that was like my first gig. And all I wanted to get out of it, brother, was enough money to buy me a used car. You know about this. So I can drive to Orchard Beach on the weekends and not have to take the train and then the bus because that was the only way to get to the beach back then. So I got the car, 
And my best friend Eddie totaled the fucking car the next day. Damn. And that's how I started my career. Like Russell Peters says, fucking Eddie. <laughs> fucking Eddie. <laughs> you know, but... Um, wow, man, Miami Vice. But I went Damn. back to work after that, you know, because I, I didn't know anything about the acting world. So I would get like little gigs here and there and it would subsidize my salary. And then I did this great movie with the great director, Sidney Lament, who, you know, in his own right is an incredible legend. And uh, what I did movie a, was that? Huh? Q and A. Q and A. With Nick Nolte, Charles Dutton, Timothy Hutton, Armand Asante, uh, Patrick O'Neill. You know, old school kind of dudes. And then uh, a couple years after that, we did Carlitos Way, and then we was off and running. How about Boogie Nights? Boogie Nights came later. I love your character in Boogie Nights, oh, man. Oh, bro. Because you didn't want to be a. It's like, like I, I felt like. I would want to be that guy, man. Like, <laughs> look, just put me a little in, bro. Just, <laughs> just, you just put me in the movie, and everybody back home is going to know that I'm the man. Cause yeah. Because I, I talk so much shit to them. I just need the little, a little one. To keep the hype And then going. they put you there, the bartender, man. That was hilarious, man. <laughs> that, that, that was like <laughs> bad acting 101, which I yeah. always dream of doing. Yeah, because, you know, it's like the They're movie. They're porn stars. Right. It's like the movie in the movie. Yeah. So you're not supposed to act good. You're supposed to act bad. So when you're an actor and you get to act bad, that's like, yeah. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. And then what, what got you Carlito's way? What got me Carlito's way? Pachanga. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what got me. It's, 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 it's funny. So my brother-in-law and his cousin showed up to my apartment at like 6 o'clock in the morning. They were fucking hanging out. They knocked on my door and shit like that. And they found this, this, this fucking beat up zipper leather jacket. I mean it was fucking I found one too. And they and and, and, and and they go and they go, yo, can I get that? So I wore that jacket to the fucking audition. You know what I mean? Cause it was like Pachanga, you know, down and dirty from the hood. I went in, so Brian the Palmer is there. Damn. You know, Bonnie Timmerman, Martin Bregman, you know, every, like and I'm walking into the room and I start fucking doing my lines, and fucking Brian the Palmer starts cracking up. And I'm like, oh man, this motherfucker's blowing my shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Thanks a lot. Thank God. <laughs> that was good, right? So, so you know, I'm like, oh motherfucker, he laughed, man. He, oh man. So I got home, and this is back in the day when you got like an answering machine that you gotta fucking press to Beep. listen to your message. So I, I, boom, I got home, pressed that shit. It was the casting director said. You are Pachanga. And I go, damn. <laughs> I yes. threw that jacket away. <laughs> I still got that fucking jacket, Hell bro. Yeah. It's going to a fucking museum. <laughs> no, but it. that's that's how I got Carlitos way, for real, man. You know, I went in, I put that jacket on, you know, I wanted to exemplify. Well, well here's the deal. You know, back in the day, back in the day in the neighborhood, we had social clubs, you know? And social clubs, you go in, you drink, you know, there's a pool table all the way in the back. And, and it's like you go in there at 4 or 5 in the morning. Like when you come home from clubbing and you come back to the neighborhood, you hit the social club for like a little nightcap, right? After hours. That's where you would see all the pachangas hanging, all the wannabe pachangas. You know what I mean? So it was like it wasn't a far stretch, you know, to you just you, you don't make that shit up. You just fucking live that shit, you know? How do you um for like a lot of young actors? How do you um look at a script? Like what makes what? How do you like know how I'm gonna play this motherfucker? Like how I'm gonna where this background? How do you come up with a backstory on someone? Like like Pachanga you knew, but like another backstory. Like for example, you were in um, Crocodile Dundee two, right? In what? Crocodile Dundee two. Crocodile Dundee two. Right. Crocodile Dundee two. Man. There was no fucking research to that. There was that was nothing. That was that was like that was like that was like feeling lost in a fucking foreign place. That's like, oh shit, man. That fucking, we're not in Kansas. No yo, more. we're not in Kansas, man. We're like in the middle of like, holy hell. They put a bat on you, huh? Yo, let me tell you something, bro. Let me tell you something. We went. They took our asses to Australia. Damn, they had a budget. Okay. They could have put you next to any tree or whatever, right? No, like, no, 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 no. We went. We All went. The way over there? We you went for the, for the oh. real deal. Yo, let me tell you something. We went to the outback. They build an encampment for us. So, That's like, crazy. we're inside the fence, right? So the first fucking night, the park ranger shows up. 
You know? Good day, mate. Hey, mate. How are you, mate? <laughs> and, <laughs> and so the guy starts. The first thing he tells us is he asks the group, okay, uh, if you're being chased by a crocodile, <laughs> what's the best way to get away from a crocodile? Everybody's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I go, run, motherfucker. <laughs> and he goes, okay, but how? <laughs> Fast. No, no, but how? <laughs> how? I'm just going to fucking, like, book it. And he goes, just so you know, a crocodile can catch a thoroughbred in 100 yards. So you're meat. You're done. So he said, a crocodile starts chasing you. Fucking run zigzag because they don't, they can't fucking run zig. This is for you, Pac. Because you're I'm gonna, you're gonna end up in Florida Australia. Now. You're gonna, be, you're, you're going to Australia soon, okay? So, fucking, you zigzag back and forth. So then I said, okay, so break that fool's neck. So then, so then the motherfuckers go, okay, next thing's up. Uh, out of the twenty most poisonous snakes in the world. 16 come from Australia, so <laughs> stay away from trees and bushes and don't be on looking on the rocks. And I go, okay. <laughs> this is your training? Who's this this is your rocks? Training? Right? I got a right? rock collection like, back in the lower east right, side. Right, right. And, then, and then he goes, and, and, then, and then he goes, about spiders. And I go, oh, shit. Uh, don't so, go well, Okay, what about spiders? Out of the 20 most poisonous spiders in the world, 16 come from a... So it's like, your motherfuckers hook on that 16 shit. <laughs> but, but, bro, for real, man, for real, back in, when we were doing that movie, you got, if you got bit by a snake. You're done. Or, or a spider, it's like, by the time they connect your phone call back home, it's like, they're going to hear this. Preparen la caja. Bro, they're not even bringing you back in the car. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, man. The, uh, he probably said, okay, now we're going to talk about plants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Out of 43 poisonous plants. Yo, yo, world. but let me tell you something, man. There was like, there was like this little <laughs> lagoon, like on the other side of like, they built a house for us to stay, right? So. Damn. Right in front of the fucking lagoon that's on the other side. So you, you always see like these logs in there. Those weren't fucking logs, man. Those were fucking crocodiles, man. At night, you would flash your flashlight, and you would see, like, these little marbly things. That was the crocodile. Dude. Waiting, huh? Yeah, man. So, yeah, I did that movie. So there was, like, really no planning, no, like, okay, we were just lost. <laughs> we were fucking lost. Did you meet any al uh, original Aborigine people? Yeah, we met some of those guys. and um, What are they like? Like, African Americans or Native Americans? They're like they're like they're like the native people of Australia, but you know here's here's a, it's it's really sad. It's really sad because you know the government there they lease their land to take uranium because they got huge uranium deposits, right? But the thing is, bro, I'm, this no this very true story. Was one Saturday morning, we're driving to town, and there's a brand new car, and with the hood up. And these two young Aborigines, and they can't fix. So we pull over because you always pull over to help people, right? That's that's what you do there. And they can't get the car started and shit. And so I look in the back seat, man. It was fucking full of empty beer can. I mean, full. You know, like like there were like four cases full of empty beer cans, and they're like fucked up. And it's like ten in the morning. So, you know, I, I do the thing. I put my finger inside the carburetor, and the car wants to start. And I tell the guy, come on, come on. We almost got him over. And then I said, let me try it. So I go into the car, and I look, and the fucking thing said empty. And I said, yo, stupid. <laughs> you have no fucking gas. You ain't fucking going no place. So we have to drive to town and say, and because honestly, they, back then, they didn't, pay attention to shit like mm -hmm. that, you know? So they had like a real big problem with alcoholism, just like, you know, Natives. here yeah. with the Native Americans and shit like that. And But you know what, man? These guys get like $10 million check every year for their tribe. They built, the government built housing for them and they still want to sleep on cardboard. Because, I mean, that's, you know, that they, they're, they're very primitive like that. But the beautiful thing was that they, when I first met, it was Chief John, that was the name, Chief John, 
And he looked at me and he embraced me and he called me brother. So I looked at the white Australians and I said, that's right, motherfuckers. <laughs> that's how we roll here. You know, I didn't know back then, but yeah, that was my <laughs> attitude. But uh, they took me, they took me on a hike one day and they took me into these caves and they showed me their dream time painting. And those dream time paintings were like tens of thousands of years old. So, you know, it, it was a good experience that way. But like I said, it was also sad because no, this, I went to the supermarket one time and the chief was shopping and he had his own shopping cart. His wife had her own shopping cart and the kids had their own shopping cart. So their kids had nothing but junk food and candy. I don't know what she had, but the chief... Man, he had nothing but VHS video. <laughs> Porn. Wow. <clears throat> I was like, yeah, John. Yeah, man. John gonna I'll get hot. <laughs> gonna get hot up in there in that house tonight, yo. Aborigine's gone wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Papa, Papa, you better have three or four VHSs, man, because that shit gonna burn out on you. <laughs> Check that your track. So, yeah, man. So, you know, that that was an experience. One know? of the Aborigine was an actor, right? In the movie? Yeah. And, he, and he's like a famous actor in Australia. Yeah, Ernie, Ernie. And he's a soccer player, maybe, right? I used to be, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, I'll tell you a funny story. Really? Yeah. So, people, like, you know, I, I I'm always like, pranking people so there was a time that people said yo so where you from you know and I go yeah I'm part Puerto Rican and part Aborigine <laughs> and people used to go people what, what are you, wait you Puerto Rican and Aborigine how the fuck did that happen yeah. well you know my father and I, I tell him with his face well you know my father he was in the merchant marine <laughs> and uh, he went to Australia and he met my mom in the bush <laughs> And he went back, and uh, he met up with her, and she said, hey, this is your son, and he brought me back. Because she, <laughs> she couldn't raise me in the bush. And people are like, wow, man, I never met a Puerto Rican Aborigine. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's as funny as when um, they asked Tracy Morgan who your father is, and he says Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> Which is kind of believable. They, they have the same alike. face. They have the yeah. same face. Yeah, man. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never know. Who's your father, Felipe? Paul Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah? I it, no yeah. shit? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I, he's told people that. It's my son. He's paying back my child support. <laughs> oh, my God. You've done stand-up comedy? I you, never. I, I, I We've done I improv? I tell you funny. Well, I, 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 I improv anytime. Like, like I do this show, and it's like everything is scripted, right? So, you know, you're supposed to always follow the script. I'm always, like, just throwing shit in there, you know, off the top of my head. I mean, I love comedy. I've been asked to do stand-up. I actually did uh, an accidental 15-minute routine because some somebody, a friend of mine, asked me to introduce somebody at one of his shows, and I go, oh, shit, yeah, man, that takes 30 seconds. And so I came down... And I saw my name, and it said 15 minutes. <laughs> and I go, I go, it don't take 15 minutes to introduce this dude. It takes like the, you know. So I went out, and I did a 15 minute. You were there, right? How was I? Awesome. Oh man, I, you know what? It was like the most amazing experience. I was like nervous as shit, you know. I said this is not gonna be. But man, the love that I got from that audience and see you at the Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you in New York. Well, you know, you know what I, you know how it started because I had just moved here to do a show, so I was living up in Glendale's up in the hills. So the the so I said so what am I want to say so I'm gonna say the deer story, and the deer story was I came out one morning to throw out the garbage, and I look and there's like a deer like standing 20 feet away from me, and it's like okay all right so I turn back to the garbage can I open the lid and I slam it down. And I look, and the fucking deer's still there. So we have, like, this <laughs> unspoken conversation that went something like this. Like, I well, I looked at the deer, and, like, the deer said, what the fuck? I'm supposed to fucking jump because you fucking did that? <laughs> and I said, nah, bro, I'm just new from around here. And the deer goes, yeah, I can see that, motherfucker. I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, no, 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 you know, I, I'm not trying to stir shit up. And I said, well, get the fuck back into the house, the deer tells me. And I said, bro, just chill the fuck out, okay? You know, I'm trying to be friendly. And then all of a sudden four more deers show up and they're all fucking looking at me and said what what that's right motherfucker this is how we roll 
<laughs> we ain't no fucking East Coast deal. We're West Coast deal. And I go, oh, damn, bro. Well, look, I'm going to go back in the house. And the other guy, you better, motherfucker, because we're about to pounce on you. So that was like my deer story. <laughs> but, bro, fucking deers out here ain't scared of you. They ain't scared of shit. The coyotes ain't scared. <laughs> they ain't scared of you. They just fucking look at you and say, what? It's what? Like, it's like the rats in New York. You no look shit. And you go, bro, man, this would be a creek right there. Oh, right yo, there. yo, yo. I, I, I'm going to tell you, I think I, and people don't know this shit about me, I think I own the record for kicking the most fucking rats. <laughs> Rodrigo? <laughs> Have you ever kicked a rat? He's an exterminator. Yeah, I kicked a rat. He's an exterminator, though. How big were your He's rats, man? Uh, my, those motherfuckers were like a good three, four pounders, Ooh. man. East Coast right here in Glendale? No, East Coast. Yeah, oh, they're okay. big. They're like cats out there. That's what I heard. Like I've never seen oh, yeah, but now they got these fucking <laughs> super rats. <laughs> mm-hmm. Have you heard about those? What's up with that? Super rats that weigh like 20 pounds, bro. There's a documentary about those that. Those motherfuckers Netflix. are on steroids and shit. Yeah, man, fuck that. You gotta na- chemicals. Now you got to walk around with a gun. They've learned to, they've adapted themselves. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. They live like, to, they they're live teaching like squirrels. turtles how to do kung fu, bro. <laughs> Doing yoga. No shit. They live shit. like squirrels and stuff, and they like hoard their food, and then they like, they're, they're survivors. They're called javelinas. <laughs> no. No shit. <laughs> man, so you were in, um, what was it like working in um, the, the um, that, that show where you play that um, Colombian drug dealer? Oh, oh Narcos. Narcos. Uh-huh. Was that shot in Colombia? We shot that in Colombia. That we, guy was actually the richest guy, huh? More rich than Pablo, huh? Yeah. Well, his, his, bro, the deal was, man, and it, it was crazy. El Mexicano. El Mexicano. He loved horses. Gacha. Gacha. Bro, you know, you, you huge. know, huge. You know, you know uh, they told me the story, you know, the, the group Los Tigres. They yes. Know, right? Bro, so the Tigres and Norte are like the Rolling Stones of Mexican music. Right. Right? Back. So this guy, Gacha, will fly them in so they can perform in his living room. So Gacha had like some girl that he's trying to impress and they're like, yo, play that song again. And they're like, but pero senor, we, we played that song like seven times in a row. I'm paying you motherfucker, play it again. And they played like 50 times, 50 right? times. And bro, he, they, would, they would get paid with money in shopping bags. Like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in in cash, they didn't make that much in 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 five shows back in those days. I remember um with los los tigres del norte, right? Yeah, I heard that story before by someone else from another Mex- another Tejano group in Texas that that happened to them, and um we worked with them actually. We got to meet them um, recently at the we, you, you met them too at Tropicalia, and their manager is, his name is Jorge. And I remember asking No Jorge, names, no names. No well, names. His manager, no his, the, the son of the yeah, he's the son. He's the son. And I asked Junior, him actually. I asked him, bro, did this ever happen? But I didn't mention Gacha. I mentioned the other guy. El El Rey Señor, de los, Señor de los Cielos. Yeah, what's his name? From the Mexican cartel. From the Sinaloa cartel. Whatever his name is, I thought it was that guy. So so you don't ask so wow, Chapo? Gacha. What? Not Chapo, somebody before else. That was uh, Carro Quitero before that? Uh, Almuar something, bro. Anyways, he was, he was a guy that uh, the Kali talks to in the new Narcos, Narcos 2. Well, it doesn't matter anymore. Right. But, um, yeah, bro. But what else did you learn about the guy? Bro, so, so his, bro, what I learned was that. Gotcha. Gotcha. He was huge. He was bigger than Pablo, right? He, he was way bigger than Pablo. The only reason everybody knew Pablo was because Pablo wanted to be a politician, so he put himself out in public where the other guys were, like, under the radar. But, bro, the stories that I heard, it's like, let's say us four right here, that we're the cartel. We could be arguing right now. I said, Felipe, that $50 million that just came in today, you got to take that shit because I can't fucking find anywhere to put the $50 million I got last week. They will argue about, yo, I can't money. take that shit. You got to take that or do something with it. Bro, they, they, they couldn't hide that much. Bro, huh? they couldn't fucking hide that money, bro. They couldn't launder that much, bro. Bro, bro 50, these guys were making easy fit between between 40 and $60 million a week. God a damn. week in cash, you know? And where did that money come from? The USA. Because we like Coke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, man. Back in those days, hell yeah, bro. So, um, I mean, that's some of the shit that I learned. And they had, he must have owned a lot of property, too, right? They owned everything, bro. They fucking owned everything. 
You know, Mike, the guy that I played was like really ruthless. You know, it, he had kids, it, huh? Huh? And he had kids, right? I I think gotcha. so. Gotcha. Yeah, he did. He did. You know, and but but the thing is, like, if I'm gotcha, and you and you were to ask me, yo, so how how'd your meeting go with your guys? And the guys, it's like that's the last question you ever gonna ask. You can never ask that, huh? You could. You can never ask these guys questions. You know, you can just say hello, goodbye. That's it. Is it how's it going? Uh, okay. Because that was a that was a, that was a scene where um that 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 that, that prostitute asked you how did that meeting yeah go? that's right because you don't ask because any question like that what do you care you looking for the feds oh yeah bro but well, they were they were like really paranoid too you know um but but you know it but you know it's like it's like you also understood one thing man that this country here had a real fucking craving for cocaine because you gotta understand back in those days. Cocaine fueled an economy, not just the drug, because I re I remember back in the day, it's like you know it's payday, you get paid, you go get a haircut, you go get an outfit, you take your old lady out to dinner, <coughs> now you're gonna go club. clubbing, now you're gonna be drinking, now you're gonna be chipping in for an eight ball. So before you got to that eight ball, you have already spent all this money <coughs> on all this. So that that was like fueling an economy, believe it or not. Everybody was doing it, huh? That's why Wall disco Street. was so popular. Disco. <laughs> disco. <coughs> Paliesta. She fueled the party. That's it. Did you ever go to Studio 64? I never been to Studio 64, 54. but I've been to <laughs> Studio <laughs> 54. <laughs> Somebody help me out. Nah, bro. Next know, door. You know what? You know, one, Vegas. <laughs> bro, bro. You know what? 54 or 64? 54. Uh, bro, they're still fucking looking for Studio 64. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> but, bro, bro. I went. I, I was went. thinking of summer of '64. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the blackout of '64. <laughs> but bro, I I, oh I went. I, I went one. High. I went one time. I th oh, maybe twice. They let you in. I'm a bouncer. <laughs> bro, no, I got in because my boys would uh, work the door. But the shit was, I wasn't impressed by it at all. It, it was, you know, it was a place that if you wanted to be seen, you know, I said, "Fuck that, man. I want to go dance. I want to go, you know, pick up some girls and shit like that. You know." So we <laughs> go to like. Our clubs, you know, where our people hung out. You know, Studio 54 to me was just nothing more but cosmetic and shit like that. Fuck that. That's not how we roll. Crazy, man. I read a book, man. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, man. <laughs> the fastest book I ever read. I read this book in one week. No shit. And, uh, man, if they ever make this into a movie, man, you got to be in it. It was called Random Family. Oh, yeah. Tell them, Lisa, about it. Oh, I can't tell I'll tell them. That. Random Family, it was a book. <laughs> That came out in 1990 something about a, a a woman who was living in the Bronx with a Puerto Rican family, and she was were, like a social sociology social, student. Yeah, doing a project. And she met a lot of people there, man. And one of the guys in the movie, man, he was like this big, huge drug dealer. Mm. He was about Mike Tyson's age. What was his name? Um, you mean Boy George? Boy George, yeah. yeah. Boy George. Yeah, he was a real guy. The real yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. I think he passed away recently. Yeah, I think yeah. So. He was in prison. He was a. Uh, he said, "Well, everybody was selling crack." He opened he up like, like they said. They said that New Jack City mm -hmm. was based, based on, on his heroin mm -hmm. houses. Yeah, because he he focused on heroin while everybody else focused on on crack. The same thing that uh, American Gangster uh, Frank. Oh yeah, Nikki Nick, Nikki Barnes. Yeah, so Nikki Barnes. So yeah. um, Frank Lucas. Frank Lucas. Yeah. So they would. Um, he he was young though, and he became a really big drug dealer. But this. She, he was the boyfriend of one of the girls who lived in the house that, yeah. that this journalist was, uh, it was, was part of. And it was, it was all like some of these kids were in that movie, um, not not Breaking, the other one. Um, what's the other Breaking movie that came out of New York? Not Breaking 1, Breaking 2, but it was in New York. And they had... Um, oh, the uh, break about breakdancing? Yeah, they had breakdancing. And they oh. had graffiti. You mean Crush Groove? Not Crush Groove, before Crush Groove. Oh, oh, the one that Crazy Legs was Crazy in? Crazy Legs in it, yeah. Oh fuck! I know, I know the movie you're talking and then, about. Yo, Ramon, and it was Ro Ramon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Um, um, um and they have um, Run DMC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know what movie you're talking about. Yeah, it's a good movie. Run DMC. That's not Run DMC. Not Crush oh. Groove. Not Crush Groove though. It was before that. One of the kids. Oh man. Was in the was in. They mentioned him in Random Family. He got one of the girls pregnant. You're not talking about Cooley High. You're talking not about. High. Nah, 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 not Cooley High. Yeah. Um. Um. um okay. Anyway, let's move yeah. on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We're not getting no. Well, you were the Warriors, <laughs> huh? The movie, The Warriors. I was, a, I was a PA on The Warriors. Yeah, believe it or not. 
That was a PA on the Warriors. You know when I, when I was looking up the Warriors, because I fucking love the Warriors, by the way, I found out that, that that actor, comedian Robert Townsend, he was one of the Furies. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, no, I didn't know that. How did how, how'd you get that job? Because I knew colors. Because I had colors and uh, <laughs> they needed some technical. Were well, those gangs based on real gangs or they're all make-believe? Uh... It was based, loosely based on real guys, but nah. I mean, well, you know, that was the era. That was the era. It was dark back then, huh? Yeah, man. That was the era, man. You know, that, well, you, you, you know, that was the time that the South Bronx was burnt out, Best Stuy was burnt out, the Low East Side. I mean, it looked like bombs have hit these neighborhoods back then, you know? So the only thing that we could do back then is like join a gang. You know, that was like our extended family. You talking about Beat Street? Beat Street. Beat Street, right there. Beat That's Street. right. The thing with the beat. Right. But um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> that 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 was like the gang thing back then. And um, what were those um um when you write about the bombing? Like, I would look at all those buildings. They were all bo- like they were like like someone blew them up. Like a bunch blocks and Straight blocks slums, huh? of slums, man. Yeah, well, you know, you know what? What ha- that happened? Well, I'm gonna tell you what happened. What happened back then? There were a lot of fucking greedy landlords that didn't want to provide heat to people. Damn. That didn't want to fix up shit that was broke, and so they would pay some tecato, some junkie. You know, here's twenty dollars. And start a fire in that empty apartment up on the fifth floor to get everybody to move out. And then they, in turn, would collect the insurance for that building. So it, w- it was a whole scam. But so then, the, oh, go ahead. So, the, so then they'll sit there, the, the, the building will sit there empty until money came in and then they'll fix it up. No, right. no. I mean, they, they got demolished. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, 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 they, and those, those, a lot of those abandoned buildings were breeding ground for Tecatos to go. They, that's where the shooting galleries were. But you know, and squatters and squatters started and taking squatters, over. Squatters, yeah. I, I lower was, east I, side. On the lower east side, I was part of the squatting movement. Yeah. You know, and I moved there in '95. You were squatting? Um, oh hell yeah, bro. Where at? Yeah. On on Sixth Street between A and B. Oh my God, that's where I lived. I lived between B and C first, and then A and B. Pizza would pizza delivery, food deliveries wouldn't even st- cross B. They wouldn't. Even no, go they wouldn't even cross than, Avenue yeah. A. <laughs> <laughs> like, that bad. So, oh, I live between were, B and C, were, so I were you there when the New York Poets Cafe was yeah, on, yeah, on yeah, 6th yeah. Street? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that I used to hang out in the place called Charas, yeah. which was on Avenue B and 6th Street, right off the corner on the second floor. By the deli, and, like right there? And right in the corner. Mm-hmm. And, and there we had a music studio downstairs mm-hmm. called uh, Tu Casa. And so, oh, look at that. Nice. It's a small world. <laughs> yeah, I lived on 6th Street for the first five years of living in New York. Those are like <coughs> two. 2001. No, that was 95 through 90 through 2000. Then I moved down to Fulton Street area downtown. Wow. So you um so now what you working on? Cause you were a detective in France. Now what? Now uh, <laughs> Cold Black. <laughs> now I'm working on, now now I'm a trauma nurse on a show called Cold Black based on L.A. County Hospital. Oh no. Wow. Yeah, man. And uh, 911. It's, it's 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 amazing. I mean, cause. Um, Ali Hospital had no joke, man. And no, you no get shot freaking in joke. Night, you get shot. In a, you get shot in LA in a drive-by. They follow your ass to the hospital to make sure you died. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know they have. You, you ever hear homeboy drop off? No. So LA County, they they have this thing that people would drop off somebody that got shot, and then they press this thing and the alarm would ring inside, and they called it the homeboy drop off. Because people would drop people off, and then that way there's no witnesses. Not want to come in. And right? Know. You know? So, yeah, man, there's a, a real thing called homeboy drop-off. But um, um, I, it's, it's, it's L.A. County Hospital, man. It's an amazing place. It's where emergency medicine was born. You know that before there was a trauma center, emergency rooms, that they take you to an emergency room? It could be like a dentist treating your stab wound. Because they didn't have trauma uh, teams mm-hmm. back then. And that came out of L.A. County, where emergency medicine was born. Mm-hmm. I make that whole speech in the beginning of, of the show. Nice. Damn. Awesome. My brother was, um, he was um, in the jail ward at the at General Hospital. When he got shot by the cops, mm-hmm. that fool was, lo- he was like, he was like in a coma 
with his leg handcuffed to the bed just in case his soul tries to leave. To <laughs> no shit. Yeah, he recovered, though. When he woke up, he didn't know why he was chained up. Bro, you shot at cops. That's why you chained up. <laughs> That's crazy. No, I've been doing this show for three years, and, you know, I'm out here. But, you know, I'm I'm, I'm looking to do other things, Um, um, you know, to do a little producing, to... Uh, Maybe do a little stand up now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Check out Luis. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Come to us. I'm not trying to take your job. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that. You too, too There's bad. There's a job opening than this job. <laughs> <laughs> People wake up in the morning. I want to do comedy. Go do it, homie. <laughs> yeah, man. Go do it, homie. You know, but uh, no, man. And and I'm a. I love I love helping out the the East LA Boy and Girls Club. You know. Um, um, any any time I could I could throw a little something that way I do. Have you directed or produced anything yet? Um, the, um, I did a movie. I produced a movie called Puerto Ricans in Paris. I shot that with a bunch of my friends. You know, we shot in Prague, Paris, and New York. It was a little movie that we did. That's the one I thought that was your detective in Paris. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Did you see that one? I started with a little French hat, a little beret. <laughs> Yeah, man. I kept thinking rusty. That's it. <laughs> no, no, we shot that movie. We had fun doing it, man. It was just a little label love thing, so. I should just do a Born in East LA, another one, bro. But this time it was Louis Guzman gets lost in Germany, bro. <laughs> bro, I'll make it out of there. Fuck that. <laughs> I'll fuck that. Were you ever in a service, Navy, Marines? No, um, um, I, I look the I, statements, I, bro. I, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna tell you the truth, bro. So you brought that up, all right, bro? I couldn't even fucking make it in the Cub Scouts, man. <laughs> okay, true story. You're like me, true bro. True story, puppy. I... True story. Ready? So my mom, to keep me out of trouble, she would always try to get me into these things. So she go, Papa, I'm putting you into the Cub Scouts. You know, you're gonna be fine for three fucking months. For three months, it's like. Okay, Guzman, your turn. What's the oath? Okay, a cup count. Promise to be loyal, <laughs> uh, respectful, healthy, <laughs> uh, cool. And it's like, nah, but <laughs> for three months, bro, they were. I, I would get that test every week for three months, and I and and, and at the end. My mom shows up. The guy says, "You know what, your son? You know, no, he can't. He can't. I could not remember the oath to save my life, <laughs> <laughs> and I got kicked out of the." Cup and now style. you remember lines all the time. Oh no, Scripts shit! That's real everything. easy. <laughs> a, pro a producer, a director, a casting Bro, director. I am the youngest Latino to ever gotten kicked out of Catholic school. <laughs> Did you hear that story? No. no, tell us. So, bro, bro. So, <laughs> what happened was, <laughs> I was in kin I was in kindergarten, you know. So the nun, I, something happened, and the nun hit me with that with that fucking stick. I hit her back. <laughs> they sent me to mother mother superior's office. I'm standing. I'm sitting in mother superior's office. My mother shows up. Mother superior says. Today was his last day, <laughs> and I'm walking home with my mom. My mom's about to beat the shit out of me, but before she does, she asks me, why did you hit the nun? I said, because, Mommy, you always told me never to stay hit, and she hit me, and I hit her back. I did what you told me, <laughs> and that was the honest truth, and she looked at me, and she still smacked me outside my head, <laughs> and that was it, but it was the best thing that happened to me because... Look where I'm sitting today because of that moment. <laughs> Who knew? On the What's Who Up knew? Podcast. Quien sabia. <laughs> Who knew? Quien sabia. <laughs> Quien sabia. <laughs> ya tu sabes. Que milagro. Sin parar. Sin parar. What's up, Rodrigo? Chilling, man. You ever do any theater? I did theater back in the day. And um, I, did, I did this movie called, I mean, this play called Henry Lumper that was written by a guy named Israel Horowitz. His son was one of the Beastie, Beastie Boys. Boys. And um, he's in a little trouble right now, huh? Who? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Adam? No, the the dad. The for dad. Like, yeah. Really? To be honest with you, I don't follow that shit. So, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Regardless. Because of the fact. because we're not in trouble, <coughs> right? Oh, oh shit! Don't say anything. <laughs> don't say anything, Felipe. I'm don't good. Say, 
Okay. I only harassed my wife. Yeah. <laughs> no, but check this out, man. So I did this fucking play, and um, and uh, it was fun. It was great. But one night I did like something that you're not supposed to do, right? I got a little stone before the play. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and my boy had some really good weed. And <laughs> it's like, Cunha, man, it's three hours before the show. Fuck that. Let's go. So I figured, you know. Oh, wow. The, uh, so, so I figured, like, you know, by then, you know, the buzz will wear off. I get to the theater. I am fucking buzzing. I am hyperdrive. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I do the play. Everything seems like slow motion, <laughs> right? At the end of the play, like, the director always gave notes to people. I, I never got notes, which is a good thing. But that night, I got a note, and I go, oh, fuck. Oh, damn. I didn't want to open the note. I finally opened the note. <laughs> Where'd you get that weed? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. Fucking open the note. It says, your best performance yet. <laughs> Shut up. Because <laughs> Homeboy wrote damn. another killer play, too, like the Indian Takes the Bronx, right? A little classic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never saw that one, but yeah, that was the only play I ever did. So, Miami Vice. Hell yeah, though. To now. To now, man. Who knew? Who knew? You know? But like I said, Papi, like for me, the, the main thing was always to stay humble and really never forget where you come from and always be a giving person, man, you know? Like I didn't have to do this, but I wanted to. Why? Thank you. Because it was yeah. you, you know? Because that's like. Like, I said, oh, hell fucking yeah, Felipe. Yeah, man. That's what's up, fool. That's what's up, fool. You got both the ear. You got the ear on the streets on both coasts. <laughs> That's it. You know and what I mean? So. Doom. Oh, yeah, and you're going to New York, man. Yeah. You're Microsoft. going to New York in, in, in January. Play, PlayStation Theater, January 13th. January 13th. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, hopefully um, I'll come into New York and check you out. Stop by, bro. Do a guest spot. Five yeah. minutes, ten minutes. Yeah. Whatever you want. Oh fuck! I will. Yeah. You know yeah. I will. We'll write you down I for can talk minutes. that New York <laughs> shit up there. <laughs> yeah, man. Or you could just host or, or introduce whatever. No, you want man. To do. Whatever or you want. So, or we'll introduce you. Yeah, man. Or you can introduce him. Bro, bro, bro. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy, huh? Yeah, that would be insane. We're we'll a pachanga jacket, bro. No shit. <laughs> Your pachanga jacket. I threw that out. Um, I have a pachanga jacket. You had a pa dude, you had a pachanga yet? Yeah. This when jacket. When you mentioned pachanga jacket. I remember you from that movie, bro, right? And then I said, you know what? <laughs> but Changa's wearing the same fucking jacket that Donnie Brasco was wearing in Donnie Brasco, the brown one. You know, the brown? Yeah, yeah. And so every time I, I will put on my... Bro dude. It I was like a brownish red I got to I got to fight with my jacket that the sleeves ripped right here from socking people and um, or just getting into a wrestling fight with somebody. But uh, that, my, was, that was your my joke. wife. Every time I, my wife will see me wear that jacket, she knows that I'm gonna be gone for three days. I knew, I knew he had fallen off the wagon. <laughs> no uh -uh. shit. Yeah. Hide nope. the jacket. Burn that. <laughs> I did. I threw it away. Burn that shit. It was like, Fuck did that. you ever see the Twilight Zone where the guy puts on the shoes of the dead man, the dead gangster <laughs> guy, and he becomes <laughs> like a gang, like he takes on the persona of that guy? Uh-huh. That's what this jacket was like. Oh, Jekyll my God. Like it was like costume, Jekyll and Hyde. That like fucking jacket was a sin. It was. It looked better bad. in black, though. Oh. That jacket had <laughs> holes in the, in the pockets for me looking for cables of crack that I thought I lost. <laughs> It was bad news. <laughs> Bro, you used to find shit the in the pockets that jacket. weren't pockets. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, yeah. There's a picture of me with that jacket. Um, I want to see a picture of that jacket. I, the picture of that Louis I got, I got no. Louis, that's a me wearing, it's a picture of me with that jacket. Nine years ago. And I'm wearing like a gangster hat. And I have braids too, bro. Oh yeah, I braided every, like time I braid, every time I braided your hair too, you'd fall off the wagon. <laughs> oh girl, so you were enabling then. I didn't know it. That's time. fucked up. <laughs> I said, Papi, you gotta go. Come here, let me braid that hair. <laughs> said braids. Damn. Yo, yo, see, see that bro? jacket should be you, in the Smithsonian, you, I bro. Know. Uh, Felipe, you never heard that perspective, huh? Lock never, man. Oh yeah. You're enabling me, man. What? It was the true pachanga jacket. So, but papi, papi, papi. I love back. that jacket. Should I ever see you in braids, man? We're taking you down. <laughs> yeah, okay? tackle him wherever you see him. You know him what I'm saying? I put on braids, bro. I look like Queen Latifah in that movie, Set It Off. <laughs> Coco. Oh, did you ever see me in braids? No. Oh. Yes, you were in braids in that movie, Anger Management. That's right. Oh, wow. That shit fucking hurt. Dude. Here's that jacket. Let me see that jacket. And look, and I, and I can't I'm, expand and I'm the picture. Crazy. <laughs> That's 
That's the beginning of the night. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. That's the, jacket. That's the jacket from hell. Yeah, yeah, man. Damn. Post that up. Oh, wait. And here you are with an afro wearing that jacket about to oh, go out on Halloween. Oh, no. On Halloween, Oh, yeah. this Halloween night, I got so f- <laughs> I didn't make it. I passed out somewhere. Okay. All right, just for that, I'm going to show you my afro. Well, I'm going to show, show you my afro picture. Because we all, bro, 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 really? Okay, here we go. Cuidado. <laughs> Cuidado. I got to find Cuidado. that. Cuidado. All right, here we go. Here Look we go. out. Look out because it's about to get, oh shit. I got, I got, bro, it's coming. Be pay, say something. We got, say the, something. we got the vinyl for say sale. It's coming up soon. We you have know, Christmas you know, sweaters you know, for sale. Christmas yeah. sweaters for sale. Look. They'll be gone on January 1st. Yes. We won't sell them anymore. Okay. Well, g- bro, keep Gigo talking. Rodrigo Torres wearing his coat jacket. Yeah. You ever had an afro, Rodrigo? Nah. My hair will just stick out like a... Uh, Oh, yeah, I remember you, you, were, you were letting your hair grow long, but it was going badly. <laughs> I cut that shit off when I fell off like the house. Bunion. Do you have that picture? The picture's lost in the <laughs> ozone. It's back in Australia. We Yeah. Yeah. Every, every time you will see um, Lu- Louis Guzman in a movie, you know, oh, that's that guy, huh? Oh, hell yeah, dude. It's a character actor. That's that's him. When, when oh, I see him on Saturday, I was oh, starstruck. Shit. I was like, what the Look fuck? at that. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Look at oh, that. Wow. Oh, I have seen that pic. Oh, wait, I think I saw it on his page. Wow. Yeah, yeah That's bro. That's amazing. Your father is aborigine. You have, ah! I know. You have T-shirts of that, right? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, have yeah, one. I, I want to get one yeah. of those T-shirts. Give me one of those T-shirts. I want one. <laughs> I oh, like yeah. Wow, bro. You know what, eh? You, you could tell, bro, like, all the, all the, How many drugs was I on? He had that bad boy look that the lady liked. You could look have at been that. in Warriors. Who was a guy. comedian from Puerto Rico that was really good, but he died? Oh, he comes France? out. He was no. a ghost. He was He's a ghost. A, oh, 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 Rick oh. Aviles. Rick Aviles. Yeah, Aviles. That's who you remind me so, of. Every so, time we got so, roaches, l- every l- time roaches. Yes, bro. Let me tell you. So, let me let me tell you a story. Okay? Type our tell us. And I promise you, th- we're gonna be hanging out one day, and this is gonna happen. I'm letting you now up front. Yes. Oh no. Okay. How many people come up to me and say, "Yo, I love you and ghosts," but. Why did you have to kill Patrick Swayze? <laughs> I swear to God, bro. Not you. Like, if I got a nickel, yeah. if I got a nickel for every person that has told me that, I own fucking Warner Brothers right now. <laughs> and an island. Okay? So I have to tell people. Bro, one day I, I, one day I was in Detroit changing flights, and this little old lady, and she comes up, I love you and goes. And I felt so bad. And I said, no, <laughs> honey, I wasn't in ghost. I'm sorry. So she goes, so what were you in? I said, uh, you ever see the, the Count of Monte Cristo? She goes, oh my God, my favorite movie. I said, I was in the Count of Monte Cristo. And she goes, no, you weren't. And <laughs> from that day on, anybody that says, I love you and goes, I go, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Right? Right? No, Rick Avila's boy, he to host the Apollo. Yeah, man. He goes, we got roaches and roaches. Well, how many? Oh, okay, there you go. There you go. Who's that, Robin? Uh, Robin, yeah. <laughs> so, I, here goes a nice trivia question. How many people in a movie have worn the Robin outfit? Three. You in, uh, you in a movie and Eminem in a video. <laughs> Three? What, what were they? Who were they? Jerry O'Connell, right? I mean, not, that's not his name. What's his O'Donnell. name? O'Donnell. O'Donnell. No. Yeah. Chris O'Donnell. Chris O'Donnell, O'Donnell, yeah, not Jerry O'Connell. Chris O'Donnell, and then uh, and then Bert, the real Robin, and then Bert. Bert, what's it? Bert yeah. Yo- uh, Young. Bert Ward. Bert Ward. Bert Ward. Yeah, Bert Ward. And, and me. Then, yeah. Wow. A Boricua, a Latino, wearing oh, the yeah. Robin outfit. Nice. Think about that. But the Arsenal for Rican. <laughs> you understand? Know yeah. yeah. Batman and Ruben. <laughs> Batman and Ruben. Yeah, man, so Rick Avila, he's a, he's a funny-ass comedian, bro. He told the Apollo, yeah. look him up, people, Google him. He tell what you go, you know, there's the, the roaches and roaches. Well, you ever hear the, the shit that he does about the pigeons in Tompkins Square Park, like nodding out? He invited me to his apartment because he lived around the corner. So he said, Papa, I'm going to do my new routine for you. And I'm going, okay, dale. And then he, like, doing the, he stops after 15 minutes. He says, what's the matter, Papa? You don't find this funny? They said, oh, no, 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 white people going to laugh. It's just, you know, we're from the hood, bro. We know the fucking pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other one, bro? The one that, the one to perform on the street, Burnett. 
Uh, Charles Barnett. Charles Barnett. Oh, Charlie Barnett. Charlie Barnett. You Charlie Barnett. Oh, hell yeah. Was he really like on it, like he to have big crowds? All the time. All like the, tons of crowds. Like, right? like, like two, three hundred people. At what park? In Washington Square Park. Because I remember you mentioned that in the movie, in the movie, um, in the movie on Carlitos Way. You said, they shot him over there in front of Washington Park. Yeah. But, bro, Charlie Barnett was... He was, was big, the, right? He was, was a performer, he, super he, performer? He, he, he was the shit, you know. It, he was a DC cat. It, it, was, mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was just so sad, though, because, like, you know, with Rick, you know, Rick died of AIDS and stuff like that, you know, and, and, and I think Charlie died, you know, from, from drug abuse and stuff, you know, but... You know, they were like really, they, these guys were really fucking tough. They were the, the real fucking deal, man. Yeah, and, real um, flavor right there, huh? Oh, yeah, man. And it was just so sad, man. But, you know, they gave us, you know, for the time that they were around, man, they gave us some really good shit. You know, good, good, great time. So you got to see them perform live? All the time. And Charlie Barnett in the streets? All the time. Big, huh? Big time. Huge. Uh, he was the, one of the first guys to do um, the Chinese voice, huh? To do the, uh, the impression. Yeah. Yeah. And the comparisons too, because a lot of like when, when, this, when we were talking to Sully, Mc, you know Sully McCullough, he was the comedian you saw on Saturday, the black comedian. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was telling us too that um that that um Dave Chappelle, Whoopi Goldberg took a lot from Charlie Barnett's style. Everybody did. Yeah. Everybody did because Charlie was so fucking. You know what? Charlie didn't care, you know, and he had that rhythm to him and he had that life to him, and man, he just put it all out there. And he was very confident on himself, and he was great. That's what I want, man. I want people to be talking to me afterward. Not about Felipe. Felipe was, Felipe was funny, bro. Fuck that. They said <laughs> that fool had four hours of solid material. Who? The Charlie Barnett. Easy. Easy. He would do, like, a lot of shows. Like, I remember when um, they were m making that movie. Uh, we, um, what's his name? Um, M Michael Collier. Michael Collier, he's a famous street performer. He's a comedian, too. He was in um, House Party 3. He's been in a lot of movies. And he said that, um, he, because he's a street performer in Venice Beach, he said, nah, man, Charlie Burnett came in one weekend. He was filming here in L.A., man. He was clearing at least, he was 5 Gs of performance. Easy, uh, in the easy, like cash, easy, in the easy. In the streets, bro. But the problem was, back in those days, our guys didn't know how to handle that fucking money because most of it went on blow, and the other half, you know, like just treating people and shit, you know? So I mean, that was, that was the problem, you know. But, you know, that was the problem, too, not only for comedians, and but, you know, fucking athletes back in those days, man, when they were making all that. You know, how, do, how you figure this. How, how does a guy sign a $150 million contract and four years later he's bankrupt? I know, man. You know? I remember, they, I remember Chris Rock did a documentary about a, a famous New York Knicks player that he was like the best, the best New York Knicks player, but that fool was partying hard. Oh yeah. And, and you're talking. Oh Ray Williams. Yeah, you go. Yeah, Ray Williams and Sugar Ray Richardson. Yeah, they were supposed to be big, huh? They were. They, they were big. Partied hard. But, you know, the story goes, man, because that was before random drug testing. These brothers be like, yeah. On a good one, bro. Putting it down. Yeah. He had a triple double on an eight ball. Yeah, no shit. It was back in the day when um, these athletes would meet the drug dealer in the bathroom during the game. Yeah, yeah. That's the, like that guy from Boston, right? From yeah. the Celtics who was, he crossed the bridge. He walked in his uniform mm -hmm. waiting for his drug dealer. He was hooked. Yeah, but that, I mean, that, but that was stuff back in the day. Okay, let's bring it back to the neighborhood. Let's bring it back <laughs> to the neighborhood. What's up, everybody? What's up, What's up, oh! What's up Full Podcast? Popping that Luis frequency. Guzman, Rodrigo Torres. Yeah, man. Lisa Sparza. Thank you very much. You anything else you want to add? You, you, you want to no, tell bro, people I, to I watch? Just, the I just want you to keep doing your thing. I'm keep do representing, it. man. And, um, representing. you know, you're a class act, you know, and and uh, you're funny as shit and really proud of you and really proud to be sharing the space with you guys. So. Likewise, brother. Thank you for sharing. We're not worthy. Not even. But thank you for the praise. <laughs> oh, man, now we got goosebumps. Oh, Papa, Papa, just do me a favor. Just check out that your car battery is still there when you run out. <laughs> you know, because I have I have I have Pepe and Lilo out waiting for oh, me. Oh, we have a lock, man. <laughs> that, that took me back, bro, to locking up your car with a lock, locking up your. Pepe. Yeah, remember you had to put that fucking shit around your steering wheel. My and shit? dad used to close the before car before the he closed the hood. He would pull some um, plug out, bro, a sparks plug out. For the car won't start, they try to steal it. 
<laughs> because our car was stolen twice by the same person. Back in the days with old cars, just go in there and just unhook the hood and it'll pop. Yeah, Mira man. Mira little ratero. Oh, hey. <laughs> right here, wheel man over here. <laughs> What's up, fool? We got our Jingle the Repo man over here. Lisa on the wheel of steel. Aaron over there, on quietly over there. Aaron's doing on the thing. wheels of steel. Veronica over here, chilling, taking notes, yelling at Cap G. <laughs> we got Luis Guzman right here, came in like a soldier. Yeah, man. Please watch um, Cold Black and what um, if you want to do something fun this this holiday weekend, smoke a fat blunt. <laughs> um, look for Luis Duman on IMDb and watch all his movies in yeah, a man. row. It's a good read. It's a good read, man. Over <laughs> three hundred movies. Yeah, I made it up. Okay, <laughs> I'm so happy you did. <laughs> What's up, fool? Okay, I'm cracking this. Thank L- you very much, everybody who showed up. Later. Later. Now he has to go back.